What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. We're on a field trip today to a very special location and I wanted to bring you guys out here today because a lot of you want to know how to grow better fruit trees. And so we came to the only place that I could possibly think of that has probably the best fruit trees around and that is a multi-generational farm that's been growing right here in Michigan since 1930. And uh, if you know the McCollum's name, you'll know McCollum's Orchard. Now, the gentleman that, that actually founded that farm moved over here and founded his other farm where he right, basically grows uh, some peaches and things like that. In fact, this is the man right here. So we actually came back into the orchard a little bit because he actually, when he uh, brings in people, because this is a U-Pick patch, he uh, has so much passion that uh, he likes to explain how to, you know, how to pick a peach, how to tell when it's ripe, and uh, likes to kind of give them the whole, the whole uh, experience so they have fun doing you pick and so I wanted to kind of give him some space but we're here at his you pick patch and before we actually got started he didn't really want to be on video he said he doesn't really like doing videos but he was a wealth of knowledge and gave me all the information that he has been doing and he learned from his grandfather and his grandfather's grandfather that actually started the farm and so uh, we're super excited to be out here and I want to share with you some of these tips so the first thing you'll notice is the peaches the peach trees themselves are not that tall he said he actually keeps his peach trees so that you don't have to manage them with a ladder. He said if you go further than a ladder's length where you actually need a ladder to access and manage the, the orchard, they've gone too tall. Peaches actually do better lower to the ground. And you'll also notice that some of these trees, they're different ages. He said they age, uh, they, uh, the average peach tree will only last about 18 to 20 years. After that, they need to be replaced. And so he'll cut them out, plant a new tree. And so you'll notice, I mean, there's this tree is probably, uh, he's saying that uh, the oldest trees are around 15 years. And then there's a tree like this, which is only about four years old. And you can already see that in the center, if you come in here, the center of these trees, you can tell a good orchardist by how the center of their trees look. It's totally open in here. And this is known as what he called, uh, he's, he said this is known as the goblet uh, pattern. And so when you have the branches going out in different directions and the center open, it creates a goblet. And he said that goblet is intended to catch the sunlight and that helps to ripen the fruit better and get better airflow, which helps reduce things like disease. Now he explained to me the fertilizing. The fertilizing is basically as I've talked about in some of our videos, only I wanted to share with you what he does. Now I will say full transparency, he's not a fully organic uh, gardener or farmer. Um, he uses kind of a combination. And so he uses in the spring, a high nitrogen fertilizer. He uses a 4600 that is extremely high in nitrogen. Now I would might, I might uh, dial that back, use some blood meal, um, maybe use some, uh, maybe use some uh, Chilean nitrate or something like that. Something that's gonna be high in nitrogen that's not super uh, potent and concentrated, but Nevertheless, he uses a 46% nitrogen. Um, it's basically just a concentrated urea or ammonium nitrate is what he uses. And he applies that in the spring. Then he said he follows up as soon as the blossoms open, he follows up with a triple 19, 19, 19, 19. Again, that's a synthetic fertilizer, but you could use any you know, well-balanced fertilizer. You could use anything that's gonna have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But Again, if you want to kind of carbon copy what Marvin's doing here, that's what he uses. And then he said he also follows up in the fall with a, uh, with a high potassium based fertilizer. And I asked him why he doesn't necessarily use as much phosphorus. And he said potassium actually helps with uh, disease and, um, and helps kind of boost plant vigor. And so he said that his grandfather has been doing this and it kind of differs from what a lot of uh, a lot of like agricultural extensions will recommend you do because a lot of agricultural extensions will say focus on phosphorus because phosphorus helps with root development and since it's a perennial you want to make sure that you're boosting the root development to get it through the winter and his dad said no way no way we need to we need to focus on plant vigor and so for 90 plus years they've been using a high potassium fertilizer around winter which i mean i don't know I mean, it's not something that I've ever come across. And so I was really excited when I was talking to him about this because as, a, as someone that likes to teach other people and also loves to learn myself, I'm learning that there's so many ways to grow that they don't always have to agree, but you still get great results. 
And so what he does in the fall is he applies uh, just potash. He applies, it's a sulfate of potash. SOP is kind of the abbreviated term, sulfate of potash. That brings up the pH, or sorry, lowers the pH, makes it a little more acidic, which he said is kind of crucial for this soil here. The soil is very heavy clay. And so because of that, clay tends to have a little more alkalinity to it. So he adds the sulfate of potash to boost the sulfur levels and uh, increase the potassium levels going into winter. And he does that um, just as soon as the leaves are starting to fall off the trees. So kind of interesting, uh, interesting way to, to take care of your trees. So the next thing I wanna talk about is pests and diseases. So uh, you know that peach trees are pretty prone. If you've ever grown peaches, you know that they are some of the most prone to disease and pest crops that you can be growing. And uh, Marvin said that he applies a uh, basically a broad spectrum insecticide as well as fungicide. And he basically calls it, he called it his witch's brew, which I thought was kind of funny because he's like a 85 year old guy. And he's just, you don't expect someone to say witch's brew uh, coming out of you know, a professional uh, orchardist, but he called it his witch's brew. And he said he mixes up a concoction of copper fungicide to prevent against things like peach canker, peach curl, and things like that, which affect peaches early on in the spring. He adds a uh, basically a, an oil to help it stick to the leaves. He uses neem oil for that, which is organic. You can use neem oil. And copper fungicide is also organic as well, which is great. Um, but then he, uh, he actually applies on top of that, he actually ap uh, applies a, um, it's basically like liquid seven, which is not organic. Um, and liquid seven, um, he uses to basically treat the, uh, the early spring. And he specifically said, which I was happy to hear, he specifically said he did that before the blossoms open because he does have bees on the premise. And he said to me, he said, why would I wanna kill the things that are creating all this beautiful fruit? And so it does kind of show that, you know, his method is at least safe. He has great fruit production. He also has great bees, which is awesome. And, um, and so it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it's not the approach that I would necessarily take but again, there's more than one ways to grow food. And I think at, this, at the core of this channel, I at least wanna show you guys how different people are growing food. And, um, and so he does that basically up until the blossoms open. Once the blossoms open, he stops so that he doesn't kill the, the bees. He said he waits until after the blossoms drop because that is the period of time when honeybees are gonna be pollinating the fruit trees. After the blossoms drop, he continues to spray his witch's brew basically all the way through until the end of uh, until the end of June. Once June uh, begins, he just simply sprays the uh, the liquid seven. He sprays the liquid seven in a diluted form. He dilutes it by fifty percent. He sprays the liquid seven on the crops basically every two weeks to keep down the Oriental fruit moth because the Oriental fruit moth will come basically all summer long but the copper fungicide, he stops uh, basically in the spring and the neem oil, he stops in the spring because the intended purpose then is just to target the pests. And I gotta say, I mean, the fruit looks incredible and Marvin's doing a great job. And so um, there's a couple of other things that he kind of gave, but I wanna go back to them uh, because there's some great examples uh, kind of, uh, you know, closer to the uh, beginning of the orchard. So let's go check those out. All right, so Marvin actually gave a tip and I thought it was so awesome that he gave this. And he was talking about how he actually sustains his branches so that they don't break under heavy fruit yields. And he uses little wooden posts. He just uh, drills a hole through them and basically ties a, a wire or yeah, you know, like a, a thick wire around it so that it doesn't move around. And once the weight of the branch is pressing down on the post, it creates just kind of like a, like a, a monopod just a, basically a tripod that the branch supports itself on. And he said, this is critical. Marvin said, this is one of the most critical things to his orchard because what it does is it actually will slowly train the tree. This I think is phenomenal. And it's such an awesome way to grow because what you'll notice is that goblet formation doesn't ever close up. He said, you never let the goblet close up because if you, it's like putting a, a lid on a cup, try to pour orange juice on a cup with a lid. It doesn't work, right? You gotta catch the sunshine. And so he said that the, the goblet stays there. 
but the goblet continues to grow out further and further and further. And what helps to continue that goblet shape and prevent the tree from closing up, which it will naturally want to do. These trees naturally want to close up to follow the sunshine. The weight of the branches on those posts actually help to get this cascading draping effect. And then the trees start to curl up. And then the next year, because the trees grow in an outward pattern, the next year's growth will grow and curl. And he basically just moves the supports down as the branches sturdy up. It prevents breaking, it prevents uh, fruit from you know falling on the ground, and it actually helps encourage that goblet shape, which I think is so freaking cool. I'm gonna show you my favorite tree in this entire orchard, and it's back here, and it really goes to show you, it's one of his oldest trees in the orchard. It's almost 20 years old. And that is what your tree could look like if you take care of your trees like Marvin does. All right, come check this out. This is what a 20 year old peach tree looks like. Now you'll notice, I'm actually gonna be literally going into the center of this tree. I'm in the center of this peach tree. There's nothing above me. And this span on this tree is absolutely incredible. I mean, this tree has supports all around it because the branches get longer and longer and longer. He's got a board here. He's got a board over here. He's got a board, I don't know if you can see, check out underneath there. He's got a two by four supporting that branch. Uh, this tree is fully supported. And look at just the, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that absolutely amazing? And the amount of fruit on this tree is just absolutely phenomenal. Look at this. Some of these aren't ready yet, but some of these, oh wow, look at this. Look at these, look at these beautiful peaches. Now the varieties, that was the thing I wanted to end on. A lot of you wanna know good varieties. All right, so uh, Marvin actually gave me the plant tags for the varieties that he grows in his orchard. He did tell me that the, these three that he gave me are uh, about 90% of his orchard. And the other varieties are ones that he's trialing or has tried, but doesn't grow as much of. He said these three he prefers, not for any other reason other than they're better for you pick. And so he didn't really explain what that meant. He just basically said that they're better for you pick. And so um, every you know orchardist is gonna have their preference, but uh, these varieties are his favorite. And so it is All Star, Coral Star, and Starfire. So it's kind of a theme. There's a, a star theme in all of these peaches. And so these are his three favorite peaches um, for you pick. Um, so maybe they, they might not be as good for home gardening or maybe they'll just be just as good. I, who knows, I don't know. Um, but uh, then he also grows the blushing star, the, <laughs> the autumn star, <laughs> and the glowing star. Uh, so you can kind of see, you can kind of see that Marvin, Marvin likes his stars a lot. And uh, with those varieties, those are all the varieties he has grown here on his orchard. And so I hope you guys will um, will check these varieties out. I mean, I think they're they well, they obviously produce phenomenally. And um, we've eaten their peaches before, and Marvin has some of the best tasting peaches I personally think in all of Michigan. Thank you guys so much for coming along for this amazing field trip, picking peaches, one of my favorite fruits uh, of all time. And so if you guys enjoyed, make sure to throw a thumbs up. Also, thank you so much to Marvin for teaching me everything that you know about how to grow these amazing fruits. They're a challenge for sure, but just kind of talking to a multi-generational farmer has helped me really understand that they, they don't have to be as difficult as, as they seem to be. And, um, you know, with a, with a little love and a little care and um, some, you know, a good teacher, <laughs> you too can grow these amazing peaches. So thank you so much, Marvin. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you guys all on the next episode. Remember to grow bigger, go home. Take care. Bye.